Hi, this is Tyler Lund, and I'd like to take a moment to answer a question we get fairly often, which is, how do I use a Varus soil map to improve my soil sampling strategy? Or, why should I use Varus soil maps to improve the way I collect information on my field to drive fertilizer recommendations? I think one of the most important things to just start off with is to understand, you know, soil matters in this equation, right? Soil is what's driving nutrient use, loss, and storage in the field. We've got different areas that are using, losing, and storing nutrients. And so having soil be the driver of where we take those just makes sense. I mean, previously, people would just go out and take a bunch of soil samples, put it in a bag, send it to the laboratory, and get a reading and set, set a rate for the whole field. And we thought it was an improvement to cut our field into to subsets, to make grids. But we're still putting a lot of different soil into one bag or taking a sample, driving a long time, and, and, and not uh, reading the soil as we go across the field, which can cause a lot of mistakes. Other ways we have seen people drive the map to determine where to take the samples is using remote imagery from satellites or drones to see what the crop is saying or, or to look at yield data. And, and there's some validity in that process, but one of the challenges is those maps change from year to year, a wet year or a dry year. There's a lot of mother nature showing up in, in a map and a lot of management as well with planting date differences or hybrid differences, different strategies in the field or, or even mistakes from the machine malfunctions uh, in collecting that information. So what it comes down to is we need to let soil be the driver of those decisions. You know, soil EC, or electrical conductivity, is a soil texture map. In those sandy parts of the field, we're losing nutrients, and the, the mobile nutrients are being lost. And we're banking it up, and, and the storage capacity in the clay is a lot higher. And so this is also a water holding capacity map. I mean, this is where we've got better nutrient and water storage. So that's a great influence in where we should take our samples. Organic matter, and this is where we've got higher yields that are using more nutrients, and probably less nutrients are being used in these lower organic matter spots. Not to mention, organic matter is such a crucial part of the nitrogen cycle, so we need to incorporate that for that purpose as well. And then pH. This is what is determining whether those nutrients are even available to the plant. We can have high fertility levels, but if our pH is not correct, those nutrients are not going to be available to the plant. So these three soil properties are key to understanding soil fertility. So let's look at two different ways we can take samples for fertility. One is we call diagnostic sampling. Just like a doctor diagnoses us by checking us out in different places, a doctor will take our pulse by putting their finger on our, on our wrist to measure our heart rate. They'll listen to our heart by putting a stethoscope on our chest. They'll listen to our breathing by listening uh, with a stethoscope on our back. S just like a body, a field has different places where we can check the fertility levels to better understand the variations. So here we've got the soil EC map. We can see sandy parts of the field and higher clay parts of the field. And very simply, we can drop sample locations in these areas. So we can go out, take samples, send it to the laboratory, and better understand the fertility level. We can use the organic matter map as well because it's not just EC. Let's look at the infrared. It shows us where the soil color changes. Well, we can maybe adjust our locations a little bit, get into that rich soil there. Maybe that looks pretty good. Maybe we can move this over. But we also have pH. We want to know the pH levels too, so let's look at the pH. This is the various pH sensor. We can see we've got some in the low pH, which is in the fives, and some in the high. We've done a good job of, of spreading out samples across the field but not just spread out randomly, spread out into key locations in the field. So we can save those and send those to our phone and go out and take samples and label the bag and understand the fertility levels. Another strategy, which is different than diagnostic, which is more predictive sampling, 
where we want to actually predict the nit or the nutrient levels in different zones and write fertilizer recommendations. The most common strategy over the past 20 years has been to, to use an EC map, see different zones, take samples in the zones, send them to the laboratory, and get nutrient levels from those zones and write fertilizer prescriptions for each of these zones. Valid strategy. But now that we're taking more information off the field with organic matter and slope, curvature, altitude, we can begin to incorporate that. We've done that by fusing together. Because one of the challenges is we've got multiple maps there. Here's the EC and here's the organic matter. They're not the same map. We've got slope and curvature as well. Putting it all together can be a challenge. And that's why we created the precision sampling map, which takes these different layers into consideration. We've got coarse textured dark soil. That's the green areas. Coarse textured that are sloping. So that's going to be more water water uh, loss in these areas, nutrient loss, probably droughty. Now we can take samples in these areas, send them to the laboratory, and understand the fertilizer needs for these different zones and write fertilizer recommendations for them. And The reason we care so much about it is because if we get it wrong we can make significant mistakes. This is a field in, in Kansas, but let's look at Iowa. I mean, this is not a unique situation. If we take a look at, at, at this map, let's see. If we don't choose our sample locations correctly, we can have significant mistakes. Let's look at the USDA, the Government Soil Survey. We can see we've got the best soil and the worst soil in one soil survey unit. This is the Government Soil Survey overlaid. Again, best soil, worst soil. If we were putting all that soil into a bag and sending it to the laboratory, we would have very mixed results and a very poor prediction and recommendation. Same is true for grid overlay, like, uh, using a grid. We've got, here's a two and a half acre grid, one hectare grid, the best soil and the worst soil in the same grid. And that happens a lot within the field. The best and the worst soil would be mixed if we took a good sample, but reality is we take one location in the middle and we take that recommendation and apply it to all corners of that grid and that causes significant mistakes across a field. Best and worst soil are being managed the same. And so that's why we see the Varus map as being a foundational layer that we use this map to guide where we take our samples. If you have any questions about how to apply this in your operation give us a call at 785-825-1978 or shoot us an email at support at veristech.com. Thanks so much.